Hello, Caroline. Welcome to the Sales Trends Podcast. Um, so tell me a bit about you. Hi, Matt. Good morning. Lovely to be here. Well, uh, thanks for the opportunity. That's all right. Gosh, where do I start? Well, um, being from the Isle of Wight, I decided uh, there's a big old world out there. So I joined the military at the age of tender age of 18. So I joined the army and yep. it put me in good stead rather than um, the, the main kind of industry sectors or hospitality, tourism on, on, on the island. And, and, and I did um, hotel and catering at college. So naturally, I joined as a chef in, in the army. Um, and uh, I ended up going abroad for nine years. Um, but after 18 months, two years, I retraded to the Royal Signals. So after 12 years of being in the forces, I came back to the UK and decided to settle in Dorset, near enough but far enough, but still on the coast and right on the beach, which I absolutely love. And I naturally, I, I don't know, I, I just went into sales. Um, how, did you, how did you fall into sales? I, It was, I've always been a massive people's person. Um, I love building relationships and building rapport. I can make friends easily. Um, so I just felt that, opening doors was kind of natural to me. Um, and to, to be a good salesperson, you, you have to be a good door opener. But equally, I I looked at it, I love the autonomy. So I think most salespeople like the freedom. Yeah, they're in charge of their own destiny. Absolutely. And, and, and the flexibility. But also you can write your own wage. Um, although, um, you know, I'm not materialistic, but we need money to live, right? And uh, you know, when I came back from from Germany and I left the forces, I didn't have a job, I didn't have a house. Um, and within a year... It's scary, right? Leaving the military. It, it was a little bit daunting. Yeah, a little bit daunting. And because I didn't go back home, I didn't have any family in Dorset. So uh, I, I rented. Um, I got some temporary work. I think that's unique about the military. the military people is that they can settle anywhere. I mean, I've lived in Basingstoke, mm. London... I've lived in Suffolk. I've yeah. lived in Hampshire. Yeah. And Dorset is now my home. Yes. But that's the beauty of being in the military. You're not afraid to just set up base anywhere. It's, it's great to have that freedom. If somebody said, Caroline, uh, come to the States and, and live for five years and we're going next month, I, 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 would, I would do it. I'm pretty, I, I'm quite spontaneous. Yeah. Not, not. you know, I, I don't mind a little bit of risk. I'm not a massive <laughs> risk taker, but... I would settle and, uh, um, yeah, you know, it's a big old world out there and, and life is just far, far too short. Um, so what yeah. Was your, so to bring you back to your conversation, what was your first sales job? So, uh, so I joined, uh, I joined a corporate. So I joined a corporate, um, right at the bottom as a, a field, field sales representative, um, you know, banging doors basically. Um, I didn't have a customer base for the first month. So I had to develop business targeted. It was um, within the office supplies and um, products industry. And the, the reason... I know the company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should I say the company? Am I allowed? Okay. You can, you can well, say at the time it was Office International, um, you know, big national organisation, big blue chip. Um, and it's now known as uh, Lyrico. Yeah. And uh, and I spent um, 13 years with, with the company. Um, brilliant training, amazing platform. So what sort of um, sales company. training did you have? Oh, it was very intense. Um, the say it was a fifteen week period, but it was um, a week uh, full uh, in house induction. You know, going from um, the sales sequence right from the start, from knocking that door into closing the sale. Yeah. Um, presentation skills, features, benefits. Um, you know. It, it, Those are the core skills of any salesperson, aren't they? Oh, absolutely! It really, really put put me in good stead, and um, and I think just having that military background, I, I I'm quite a methodical person. I like detail. I uh, I do dot the i's and cross the t's. So, so I I I'm not, I I was a sponge. I just absorbed. Um, I took it on on board. Um, they were able to mould me. Yeah, yeah, and which is a a unique <coughs> skill that has. Emanated yeah. from the military. Yeah. When, you're, when you're in the military, you can adapt and overcome to any situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And like a chameleon. Yeah. So I've got no regrets whatsoever about 
uh, joining up. And, and I would recommend that to every 16 year old out there, bring back yeah. the national service maybe, <laughs> but um, <laughs> not quite, but uh, you know, uh, just an opportunity. Um, and so, so I was just wondering, um, going back to the flow where we were, but yeah, the training was, was, was really, really thorough, um, hard work. And then you'd go back out in the field for a couple of weeks and you'd go back to head office and the head office was in Telford. I covered Dorset, um, you know, West Dorset it was, so it's quite rural. And, um, so you'd go back to head office. Um, I think it's, it was just because it was back in, um, gosh, 1999. <laughs> so well, that's what, 21 years ago. Yeah. Um, so that's quite scary, isn't it? And um, yeah, so there was more in, in-house induction. Um, but um, but I, I absolutely loved it. And the reason why I chose office products was I, I, I kind of thought, do you know what? This is a consumable, <laughs> every door, every floor, every business uses that product. So that's why I, I, I chose that, that yeah. product. And I stayed in office supplies for just under 16 years. Um, Cause when I left Lyrico, I went to the competition um, and <laughs> were, you, were you nabbed or did you, I was nabbed. Jump? I did, was nabbed. Yeah. 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 Um, they were like, Oh, I, I, I want this Caroline Swain. That was, my, <laughs> that was my previous name. I'm now married. I'm now Caroline Hearn. Um, and yeah, I had, I had, a, I had a good reputation in the within the office supplies industry. Um, and this I, would have been before um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. So it was yeah. by it was by name. Yeah. Well, when I joined, it it was before mobiles. We, you know, we had to go to a call box and wow. and um, and call in on and uh, check check on our voicemails on the on, on the call box. <laughs> See, yeah. Young salespeople don't get this nowadays. I know. It's yeah. just it was crazy. And it and for my first, um, I'd say, gosh, I think for my first six months, there was no mobile phones. And uh, yeah, we used to have to use um, landlines at home, fax machines for our weekly reports. I mean, in 99, I was still in the military. Um, yeah. And yeah, to phone home, we didn't have, I think uh, towards the end of my military career, I started getting a mobile phone, but to phone home, you had to go to the, the phone box in the middle of the regimental square. Uh, and you, there used to be a queue of four or five people deep uh, of an evening because you'd just yeah. call home. So it was, yeah. it was way before mobile phones and it was just, yeah, a different world. I know, scary, right? I know. Yeah. I know it's so easy now, isn't it? And uh, you know, it, everything's just a hand. Everything's connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you've worked at Lyrico. Tell me about your corporate career because you've done it for twenty odd years now, haven't you? Yeah. Well, corporate wise, it was uh, about uh, eighteen years. Um, seventeen, eighteen years. Um, so I, I left Lyrico. Um, so so within eighteen months, as 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 a field sales representative, I um. I was uh, running my own sales team, got promoted to, um, to did manager. Did you have any training to be a leader? Yeah. yeah you did? Yeah. And that's unique. Oh, it, I have to say, brilliant organisation. So what sort of training do you do to become a leader? Again, well, when you became, so I, I was put on a, a area sales manager induction. So um, it was all about leadership skills and um, it was all about, um, so, okay, when you um, take on a team, uh, covering one-to-ones, appraisals. You you were taught lots of HR um, issues. Um, but also it was all about recruitment. It was all about coaching, counselling, control, uh, training, development, because you're only as good as your team, right? Yeah. And my target was based on my team. Um, eventually I had 12 sales um, representatives, uh, you know, covering and throughout the And they all the have their own individual oh, personal problems. Yeah, own, sometimes yeah. I'd put a bottle of wine in the fridge in the morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> I needed that glass of wine when I'd, when I'd come home. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I ran a very, very successful team and uh, we won lots of awards uh, nationally. Um, I, I'd won the, um, uh, two uh, national awards even before I became a, a, sale, a sales manager. Um, um, and then, and you know, that with Lyrico, there was lots of promotions and of course you, you, promotion came with success and rewards. Um, but you had to work really, really hard to get that. They weren't just handed to you on a plate. Yeah. Um, but even with an area manager, um, within three years, if you hit hitting a certain target, then you'd be promoting, promoted to senior area sales manager. 
So when I became an area manager, we also got involved with um, new recruits induction as well. So that kind of kept your training alive as well, you know, from the head office, from the best practice. Um, so, so that was really, really good. And then when I became a senior area manager, um, I also became a regional manager. So I did field training, sales training within the field. Do you spend a lot of time um, out in the field with your sales team? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I probably had. Because I think that's lacking now in, in today's sort of sales society. Yeah. Sales reps go out and the sales managers sit behind a desk checking CRM, checking numbers. I was so hands on. In fact, I was probably too hands on. If I was to do it again, and if I would advise anybody to do it again, um, I would advised to work smarter in terms of yeah it's important to support them in the field and do activity with them and show rather than tell show because that's really important however my days were so so long and okay you know I, I've, I've got lots of I've got bags full of energy anyway even even back then but I felt that I probably wasn't I needed to become more that helicopter uh, and I was probably too too hands on really, yeah. and that that would be the only area that I would change. So, um, but that's a retrospective look when you're in the when you're in that bubble. It's hard to get that balance, it, and and yeah, you know, I mean, I was area manager for what ten years, um, so you know, it is hard to get that balance. But um, I I think it's quality rather than quantity. So I would do field accompaniments. You know, I'd meet them for quarter to nine in the morning and that, that could be two hours from my door. Yeah. So, so you're up a, early. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Early start. Um, and that's ladies, you know, we, we have hair and makeup to do, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Um, so do us guys. Yeah, well, <laughs> hair maybe. <laughs> Although looking at your hair today, Matt, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> um, I do like a bit of banter and we, we could get away with it because yeah. we're both ex-military, so we could get away with it. Um, so I've probably gone a bit red now. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, and then... So you'd be, you'd be out in the field for two hours. Yeah. So yeah. in hindsight, and sorry, go, going back to my field accompaniments, sometimes I'd be with them till like five, half five. And then I, and reflecting back, I used to think, why am I doing that? And I'd feel guilty because really then I wouldn't get home till seven, half seven. Then I'd have emails and paperwork to do. So my days were very, very long. But I guarantee the salesperson that you're with um, would take value out of that. Well, massively. I think it's just that having that respect. Uh, I've, that's yeah. kind of how I looked at it. But they take bit. value out of that out of that accompaniment because you're showing them pointers and telling them exactly where they're going right and where they, what they're doing wrong. Yeah. But they'd also think, because I thought this when I had field accompaniments uh, in one of my jobs, I'd also think, that boss has got a really easy job. He just has to sit in my car, order the coffee, and take notes whilst I drive around and do all the, all the hard work. Lo and behold, when you get into that position then, yeah. you then realise, oh, no. Well, I'd, I'd go into calls with them. Yeah. I, I would bang doors with them, you know, because I I wanted to show them yeah. um, because I'd had a successful That's um, one piece of advice start. that I'd give to all sales leaders now is to get out in the field with your staff. Absolutely. Bang on. Yeah. Absolutely. Be hands on. Show them. Don't tell them. Don't, as you said, don't hide behind a desk. And, and because there's lots of these different CRM systems around now. And believe you me, I, I love CRM systems, you, you know, and I work with businesses now and, 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 and help set them up and work, work with so many different ones, but too many leaders, as you said, just, just focus, focus on, on the focus on the numbers and results are, imp are important. It's good to focus on results. Um, however, it's, you can't change numbers how, from behind the desk. Absolutely. How do they get those numbers? What can you do to help them develop to increase those numbers? Um, yeah, just just be be with your salespeople more. Yeah. Um, so and and that put me in good stead. So you got into a position then in the corporate world where you were improving businesses and changing sales processes. What was your biggest success? Would you say out of all that time that you spent in the corporate world, what would be your biggest biggest success? Ah, uh, gosh, I'd say. Because there's quite a lot of successes as a team, but throughout the years with um, Lyrico, so what well, that was thirteen years. Every year, 
So we always had a sales league, national sales league. And bearing in mind our area was the southwest. So primarily it was Dorset, Somerset, only half of Dorset. So it wasn't Paul Bournemouth. So the cutoff was wet, the Purbex. Going down to Devon, up to kind of north Somerset. So it's quite rural. Mm -hmm. Didn't have didn't have any the only city we had actually was Exeter. Okay. Every year at our sales conference, I always had one of my salespeople on stage. Always, every year. And some of them would be in the top three. So you're living vicariously through your team. The the the, the success yeah. is generated. And, and because I'd been on the stage, I'd been on the stage twice as a sales representative, you know, for my first two years, I was on the stage. And when you're being recognized and rewarded like that in front of 500 people or more, because, you know, it's a big sales force at that time. Uh, it's such a massive feel good factor. Um, you know, it's just great for your credibility, um, respect, you know, that respect, like trust. But equally, you know, it helps obviously with your promotions and, and your pay. You yeah. know, we, we, we work to live. Yeah. Um, so, um, that that would be my kind of most proudest moment. And and then from that, you know, we'd win team of the year, we'd win regional team of the year, new business team of the year. Do you recognise that success so. in yourself? Do you recognise that I've achieved that? Or is yeah. it something like, because yeah. we were talking just before the podcast about imposter syndrome and yeah. that sometimes it's, especially being a woman in a corporate world, yeah. it's difficult to identify that you're that successful person. Maybe it's the company, maybe it's the the, the culture that's within that company. But did you recognise it yourself as a team or is it? I'd say I recognise it more now. Yeah. Being self-employed uh, as a freelance. Uh, at the time, I had that structure behind me. I was confident. Um, there were a lot of women managers. Um, I'd say there was more male um, you know, there's always that gender balance and that equality balance. Um, but yeah, I'd say the imposter syndrome is, is definitely more common with women. Um, because Do you find it harder in the corporate world as a woman? Hmm. That's a big question. Personally, I didn't personally, because I just got, got, my, head, got, got my head down and got on with it. Um, I was a one tail, you know, I just, just did it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can imagine and, and I saw that people did struggle a little bit. Yeah. Um, Why is that, do you think? I just, particularly in sales, you know, you, 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 you need that confidence. Um, you need um, you need that kind of positive attitude. Uh, you know, we're all different. And but also you need to be competitive. Yeah. Um, and you know, good salespeople are, are naturally competitive and, and sometimes bad losers, right? Um, yeah, not, very much so. Not so bad that you want to throw your toys at the pram. If you're a male, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was part of the Southern region and I'd say we, we had a good balance with women and male managers. And we all, we did have a real good, strong camaraderie. Yeah. Um, and so it we, comes down to the uh, the inclusiveness that you feel it, within a group. So if you, let's say, example, Lyrico, and you've got a large group of both male and female leaders, uh, the interactions between the leaders and the way that you can bounce off each other and banter in, in a sense. Because I think coming from the military, there isn't that gender divide because women are equally as capable as men in certain respects, like assault courses and the, yeah. the tests that they, the fitness tests, everybody has to reach a certain specific minimum. But then, if you then transition then into the corporate world, which you you've done and I've done in from a military background, I think then you you realise there are no barriers, there are no sort of roadblocks to success. You just get on and do it. And if if you do if you complete the task ahead of you, you're yeah. going to get promoted or you're going to get rewarded for it. Yeah, absolutely. And and some of my colleagues that I was managers with uh fee mainly females they've they've left a the corporate world and set up on their own and then they're and doing very very well and i've you know i keep in touch with them via the uh, social media channels and in fact i saw one last week and uh and yeah and and good on them yeah you know i really respect and and i love that empowerment and just 
yeah, done really, really well. Which brings us nicely onto what you're doing now. <laughs> so you've left the corporate world, in a sense. Yeah, so so after kind of office supplies, I was uh, headhunted again, and uh, um, it was actually my previous regional uh, sales director, and he was setting up uh, uh, a franchise uh, with imports and exports, um, and I, uh, we had a great relationship. I'd worked with him for years. Uh, still best of friends now, really good good mates. And I helped him set up um, a company called InExpress. And we were a um, courier business. And, you know, we, we went from nothing to being the number two uh, uh, franchise out of, I believe it was nearly 75 nationwide. So, you know, again, based in Dorset, doing really, really well. And I, I was doing a lot of networking and... I was work. I kind of got to the point where I thought, you know, I'm working really, really hard lining somebody else's pocket. And although, you know, I love, loved my boss to bits and we had a great relationship, but people actually thought it was my business because I was doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, hmm. and, the, and, and the more I was networking, um, I'm a seasoned networker. I do it naturally. I get it. And I get it. It's, you know, it, it's all about connecting and collaborating and building those relationships. You know, don't expect business overnight from it. And you can't go in there with a hard sell. Definitely not. But, um, you know, I, I built up a massive network. Do you think networking is massively important? Oh, very much. Yeah. yeah, very much. Definitely. I'd recommend it to everybody. Yeah. yeah and there's so Not many... just in the local area, but within any industry or. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really, really important. And, and sometimes you might not have to knock a door for the rest of your life if 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 you've got a wide you know, enough network. Yeah. 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 Um but um so going back to your original question. So yeah. no, that's me, right. well, was, so we're going off the on original tangent, question yeah. was uh, and this bit will be edited. Uh so the original question was so you set up by yourself and then yeah, you started it. talking Why about did I go? top 75 or well, you were second in the top 75 franchises and yeah. then you and why did I people go? were thinking that it was your business yeah so then just drop into from mm. people thought it was your business that's right okay so that's right so basically I thought oh gosh you know there, there's an opportunity here and because my background is primarily sales um but I I get marketing I'm not a marketing guru but I get it and I get it it, it works together and I work really really close with the marketing teams within the, the corporate businesses that that I was with and uh so I set myself up as a, as a freelance uh, as a consultant so CSE consultancy um uh was born August 2016 and I went out and um, work with businesses uh, as an external sales and marketing department. And there was business and, and there, was a, there was a need, um, which I thought, oh, do you know what? This is really, really exciting. And I've always loved my freedom and flexibility anyway, so it was perfect for me. And so I work with businesses that can't afford a full-time sales and marketing manager or a full-time sales manager but they equally want to grow they want the sales they want the processes in place um they want the sales support and with my 20 years experience I thought well there's an opportunity so that's when CSC consultancy was born uh and uh yeah it's uh yeah going really really well and what's what's been the biggest struggle in that period originally uh, I worked with a lot with startups and, and, you know, one man bands because, you know, they want the results overnight. And, and I get that totally. But unfortunately, with sales, it doesn't happen overnight. It is all about building those relationships and you need time. And when you're working with a client one day a month, um, that can take some time. And sometimes startups and one man bands don't have the budget for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I get. Do you think that's because their narrative or their message isn't clear enough at the, at the formation stage? Probably a bit of both, really. Yeah. Um, 
it's you know no disrespect to any startup or entrepreneur you know i take my hat off to them i think they're it's passionate amazing. about their product or their service absolutely absolutely and and so they ought to be and you know we we, we all start from acorns don't we into big oak trees that's where we all start um but it, equally when they're when i'm trying i'm trying to help them to put the processes in place um and some of the some some of them just just want you to be a glorified tele sales person. Well, that's not me. I'm not tele tele sales. Yeah. I'm not afraid to pick up the phone and talk. You can to people. outsource that that type of resource now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and I think mainly they needed more lead generation rather than the kind of sales management. Yeah. <clears throat> so now um, I'll only work with kind of SMEs um, upwards, and yeah. um, and so. That's that's the kind of like the the challenge that I had originally. Where do you see the future of CSC <laughs> Consulting? Where's where are you going? Okay, so I've got more into setting up sales processes because I'm I'm naturally very organised. Um, um, I, I I like detail, and our challenge in a positive way. But I want to be involved more with internal sales processes but also crm systems because crm is massive now and there were so many businesses before just using an excel spreadsheet which is fine but it doesn't work long term and the crm system and there's plenty of them around there are around and there's plenty that are free yeah um there's many bespoke there's many national platform crm systems However, uh, using a CRM system properly for their follow-ups and to create their tasks um, and for their opportunities. You need to invent that process.